today we'd like to talk a little bit about the budget that's been put together for 2019. Uh, Daryl, every year we go through a process that starts uh, somewhere in June where we're beginning to um, ask our, our management team to start thinking about their budget for the next year. And I wanted, I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the goals that were set forth for the budget team as they began to uh, start that process for each of their departments. Uh, the, there are four goals. The first is to comply with property tax levy limits. The second is comply with the state's expenditure restraint program. The third is to keep equalized tax rate at inflation or lower. And the last is to maintain a minimum of 25% of a fund balance within the city's general fund, which is the city's main operating budget. Um, and did everybody do a pretty good job in bringing budgets that met those goals? Uh, every, everyone uh, understands uh, the restrictions uh, and constraints that uh, the city faces. And as a result, uh, I saw mostly uh, needs, uh, not wants. So I was okay. very pleased with the requests that came from the management team. Okay, now everybody uh, in their department, uh, many people would like to see more people to help them out with uh, the workload that they have. Um, what kind of requests did you get and what are you recommending uh, to the council and the neighborhood of, of adding staff to the city uh, TO? I'm pleased that the 2019 budget uh, has a no net increase in overall staffing levels. Uh, the positions that uh, we are going to add uh, is an additional four tenths of an uh, accounting assistant, six tenths for a human resource generalist, four tenths for an assistant city attorney, and a one full time position uh, in our IT, a network administrator. However, this position will not start until. J uh, July 1st. For positions that will be reduced or eliminated, a half-time election specialist, a quarter a percent a production technician, and then the library uh, is seeing uh, a, redu a reduction in, in staffing levels. Again, citywide overall no net increase. For purposes of, of tracking the department head's request, uh, there were four additional requests uh, that I did not support. Uh, one was an additional battalion chief and three additional firefighters. Uh, so the, the, those positions are not included in my recommendation to the Common Council. Okay, thanks for that information. Um, you know, going on, the other big part of the budget is our bonding program. You know, state has put levy caps on us and that we can't increase uh, the levy from uh, the, uh, uh, our history in the past and only by net new construction. So many times we, we rely on our bonding program uh, to help out with other projects. Could you give us an idea of what uh, is anticipated in our bonding program this year? Yeah. Approximately 5.5 million is anticipated for 2019. The annual goal is to keep it around uh, $5 million. So we're slightly above that. Uh, the following streets uh, are included in that 5.5. And again, we're fortunate that we're able, able to leverage uh, other government agencies to pay for some of these projects. So the amounts I'm going to give you tally up to significantly more than 5.5, but uh, uh, our sh portion, our share, uh, will be included in that 5.5. The first is a $3.9 million for the reconstruction of North Avenue between 15th Street and North 21st Street, uh, 3.8 for the reconstruction of Pennsylvania Avenue Bridge, $3 million for the uh, second phase of the City Hall renovation project, uh, $2.5 million for purchasing former right-of-way, uh, this, this uh, abandoned railroad track uh, is immediately north of Indiana Avenue, $2.5 million to reconstruct streets surrounding a proposed um, apartment com mixed-use apartment complex, 118 <coughs> units. Again, these are referred to as the Badger State Lofts. 1.3 for the replacement of three fixed route buses, and 1.1 million for the reconstruction of Superior Avenue from North 29th to North Taylor. 
Now, um, we have uh, put a lot more emphasis on some of our streets, and, um, and while we're, we still have a, a garbage fee that we're collecting and that money's going into the street budget, the county is giving us some sales tax dollars to about a little over 400000 um, You know, we still depend on, on some tax dollars going into that and, and these bonding programs. Could you talk a little bit about our overall uh, plan for our streets uh, that, uh, that we've put together and how this all plays together? Back in the fall of 2016, uh, Public Works Director David Beeble put together a 14-year plan to bring sort of up to speed uh, portions of the community that uh, streets uh, had low rated uh, street surfaces. Uh, and again, along with that 14-year plan, there was a, a, a revenue uh, source recommendation as well. Uh, the council did approve that in the fall of 2016, and annually, uh, Mr. Beeble puts into the city's five-year capital improvement uh, program uh, how those streets uh, uh, should be situated and ultimately how they are funded. And uh, pretty consistent uh, with that 14-year plan and with the five-year plan, this 2019 budget executes. Uh, again. Uh, with your leadership, Mayor, uh, there is a focus on street reconstruction, and, uh, and I think everyone uh, can witness uh, the significant uh, increase in activity uh, throughout, throughout our community. Now, you know, we talk about dollars, but um, I think we need to maybe put this in, in better terms for people to understand. And I know as we look back in our history before this plan was put together, we had repaved about 2.2 miles of roads or resurfaced roads um, during the past decade. And so uh, when we ramped this up, we had a couple of years where we hit, I think, 3 and 3.3 miles. And then uh, last year and this year, we've exceeded six miles of roads that have been resurfaced. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, David's going to be able to hit seven miles if the weather's good and, and uh, the money's available for the products needed. Um, and so we'll be at our peak this last year, which is really fantastic to see. Uh, the city's fortunate uh, that the council supported uh, the purchase of a million dollar paver uh, uh, a piece of equipment that instead of hiring a contractor we could uh, perform the surface uh, layer uh, our, our, with our own crew. Uh, our staff uh, is getting better every year uh, based upon experience and as a result we're able to stretch uh, the taxpayers dollars significantly by doing it in-house. So uh, it's a program that's uh, been in place now two years uh, and as a result, we're able to stretch those dollars even further. Yeah, I think years ago we used to do all concrete streets, but as we ran into some of the budget problems, we started just putting asphalt overlays on them, and many of those asphalt overlays are deteriorating. And so, so now we can hire somebody to mill off that asphalt, and then we can replace it ourselves. And in some cases where we have concrete streets that are deteriorating, we can put our own asphalt uh, cover on it and, uh, and keep those roads in good repair. Um, if, if some of our citizens want to know where their street is in the plan and, uh, and, and, and when we'll be getting to their area, is there a way that they can find out? Absolutely. Uh, on the city's website, if someone clicks uh, under the department, sort of heading, and then uh, clicks the city administrator uh, subfile, and then uh, on that city administrator page, uh, go all the way toward the bottom and there's a list of many different links and one of those links is the 2019 to 2000 I think it's 23 uh, capital improvements program and in that document uh, there's a large spreadsheet and there's a listing of individual projects and which year uh, the city recommends that we perform the work. And then uh, I think the DPW is going to experiment with a little bit of a new process, a uh, chip seal. Um, the chip seal is uh, uh, putting a really nice, about almost a three-eighths of an inch cover over an asphalt road that's been there for a while to maintain it and keep it in good shape for the future. So uh, they're going to experiment, I think, on one road this year. And if that works out, they plan to do more in the future. Yeah, it's, it's a strategy uh, to try and extend the life a few years longer. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's a way to 
imp increase the quality of that sort of drive experience uh, on certain roads. Thanks again for uh, your time today, and thanks to all of our viewers for tuning in to learn a little bit more about the Sheboygan City budget for 2019.